Hello everyone and a warm uh, greetings to all of you. So uh, today we are going to read a very complex lesson because it it deals the lesson deals uh, a particular history of India from 1757 to 1857. So you can see that this is a very long period of time. It's a century, a hundred year, and studying a hundred year in just like few minutes will not actually make you understand everything. But I want you all to try your best, and uh, it will be easy with the help of pictures which are there in the lesson so it is the name of the lesson is glimpses of the past so glimpses means taking a quick look okay looking at something quickly and here we are looking at of looking at the past of india looking at the history of india very quick so we call it glimpses of the past so glimpses means having a quick look and there will be like pictures all of the lesson is on picture and there will be some speech bubbles so if you carefully observe the pictures it will allow you to understand the concept more clearly and more uh, uh, properly okay i hope you get uh, what we are going to read and this condition that all the events will finally lead to an event which is known as first war of independence in 1857 so we are going to read how india uh, gets uh, to the point where they first started waging war of independence in the year 1857 so let's move on without wasting further time now uh, there will be like different parts okay so the very first part is on martyrs now the word martyr means a person who has uh, sacrificed his life for the sake of a nation or for the sake of a cause uh, so now this picture is of uh it's of 1947 when india has all, has gotten its independence so when india has finally received its independence from british raj at a function in delhi and the speaker here lata mangeshka a famous singer uh, recite or should I say sang this song called oh my countryman let your eyes fill with tears as you recall the sacrifices of India's martyr so do, uh, because of the martyr's sacrifice India has finally uh, gotten its freedom and independence so on such occasion we should recall we should remember uh, uh, the sacrifices made by Indian martyrs and we should fill with fill our eyes with tear when we remember it my countrymen so that was her request you see the first prime minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru here uh, Indira Gandhi here and many other renowned uh, politician and person personality of India now here in this picture you will find many different martyr popular martyr they were like me uh, what is it several martyrs in India few of them are mentioned in this picture a few popular ones so you see Mahatma Gandhi he sacrificed his life for India's independence. Subhash Chandra Bose, Bhagat Singh, Chansi Kirani, right? Manikarnika, and here Babahadu Shazawa, and these were others. Okay, and in between we have Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who along with others are remembering their sacrifices, the martyrs. Now the second part is on how actually it all started. So it all started with a company's conquest. So conquest means when you start a war or fight a combat and you come out victorious. When you win a battle is known as conquest. And it all started with a small company which came in India and then started expanding its power. So it started in 1757. So let's read the first picture. With its superior weapons, the British East India Company was extending its power in 18th century India. So superior weapon means modern weapon, powerful weapon. Because East India Company were from Britain and because they do have powerful weapon, it was very easy for the company to extend, to expand, right, to stretch its power in all across India. So you can clearly see it in the picture, uh, the pink color is the territory controlled by British East India Company and see it's like a lot right so uh, majority of uh, eastern part is already controlled by British East India Company by then and the yellow parts are of uh, are under Indian princes so the point the main point is during that time there were no 
one ru- uh, king in India. So there were no one king. There were no one king in India. All the Indians are, uh, what to say, uh, distributed under different princes. So every area has small, small princes and they are ruling in their own region. So on the second picture, you see Indian princes were short-sighted. So short-sighted means a person who cannot think for long term. Uh, now this is a prince and he's saying that upright Raja Ba. Call the English merchants. They will help me to defeat them. Him, right? So, what are they doing? They are calling Indian merchants. Merchants are traders who are from the company. And the people had no peace due to such constant fight. So now because there were like rivalries and competition among different rajas, different small princes in India, it was, there was always a fight. Constant means a continuous fight. Okay. Now the rivalries helped the East India Company and it could easily subdue Indian princes one by one. So you can see it in the picture here we have an he have a British uh, soldier. It is dressed in British uniform. And the rivalry means the competition, the opposition. Because there were uh, competition among the Indian princes, it helped East India Company in a way that it could easily subdue, means defeat, brought under their control one by one. So now with the help of uh, short-sighted princes, uh, East India Company started waging war. They... Uh, uh, fought with another princess and slowly one by one they uh, defeat m- most of the Indian princess by then however on the right side you see another prince uh, or we'll say we say a ruler called Tipu Sultan so a far-seeing ruler like brave Tipu of Mysore fought the British till he died fighting so he was from southern India and he was an example of a far-seeing ruler not all Indian rulers were short-sighted okay we do also have a voice ruler who were brave and who died uh, fighting the Britisher he didn't surrender and he didn't fight with the Britisher, he was against them because Britishers are foreigner. They are not from the land where they where Indians uh, are born and brought up. Now, what are the reactions of Indians to this conquest? Uh, how did Indians react? So on the left side picture, you see these are supporters of English. So they, what are they saying? They are praising them. Thank God there is peace in the country now. No more wars and no more looting by thugs. Thugs means criminal. Okay, looting means It is God who sent the British. Now you see us. Uh, a, a general prince here. Our destiny is linked with them. Destiny means future, right? So our future is linked with the British. So they are praising uh, the. Uh, what's it uh, the coming and uh, power of british in india the company's power but on the right picture you see these are true indians who are now sad and upset with the events the white man has killed or dethroned our king dethroned means when you take king's position and power from king we, you dethrone the king or you kill the king so white men here are the uh What's the uh, English people, the East India Company, and some kings were not good, but after all, they were of this land. Now, they were, as I said, they were like many princes and kings, rulers during that time. Not all of them are bad, right? Some of them are good, and after all, all of the, them belongs to this king. Now we have become slaves of foreigners. Slaves means uh, you are under them as a property. You don't have any right and any freedom. So these all things happened. Sad things. So now we have a few questions. I would like all to po- click a pause here and think of the question, uh, answer to this question to check your comprehension. And there will be further questions after each section. So please listen carefully to the explanation and then try to answer it. Okay, moving on. Now the sec. Now the third one is called British rule. Now as, a, as we have seen that Britain and uh, should I say the East India Company of British they came in India and they started conquering India, right, with the help of short-sighted Indian rulers. And therefore, now British rule has become powerful and they are dominant in the country. 
After that, what happened is religious leaders, right, the Chogi, right, preached ideas like untouchability and child marriage. Now, preach means uh, you are giving lectures, right? untouchability land, the child marriage untouchability land, the child marriage land, the child land, superstition untouchability land, me kashi jure roa, dinzola, the caste roa, dinzola, the in the idea, child marriage land, religious leader that they talk about you know so much anyone who crosses the seas loses his religion the kuranzo tawa kare kesi tso gene chile chimba ina kuranzo roa and kuranzo ki chue di kuranzo thor do gori roa ta yam sempur roa chue chue tso ji gene chine kari thor do gori roa ta yine kuranzo tizue di du gala ani toba nam do dinde yoris ta all the miseries in world is due to women ta de mi kashi kala gori lana zambling nang lo la misery lana unhappiness roa dungi ta dungi lana deo digi megyo ki gyu sama sure kemen zure is roa ta de inda roo lao suin yor ni zo sui lao lana religious leader ki lao gori when india uh, was under British rule, okay? That was on one side. Now, on the other side, what is happening? The British was, uh, the truth was that Indian had lost self respect, the British scorned them. Right? lose self respect right and british scorn them scorn them means they looked at them in a very despiseful way they look at them as if they hate them and they think they are inferior and poor and vulnerable so what are they saying this is a britain uh, british you see and in indian here the natives are unworthy of trust so native means a people who belong to that land so indians are living in india so they are native the natives are unworthy unworthy means unvaluable of trust they don't deserve trust incapable of honesty we cannot uh what to say trust them they don't have honesty in their character true your honor but i'm honest okay he's accepting the uh, statement made by the british he's saying that it is true that our native people are unworthy but i'm honest so this is uh, how they are losing their self-respect and then on the right picture being merchants so merchant means as i said trader the british wanted quick profit profit than the capsan their heavy taxes force farmer to abandon their field tax lana ngazo chade roa tax lan pesha lengo ta khonzo ki pesha mangbu gola du gala farmers have to abandon their field abandon means leave and run away so they have to run away from their own farm and field so what are they saying but your men are taking all my crop crop me lana thanda de ta you are still in a rear a rear if you don't pay next week i will send you to jail so see british merchants and traders are very rude and cruel to indian people especially farmer okay inevitably famines followed inevitably as we discussed unavoidably you cannot avoid and certainly what happened famine famine lana muge muge between 1822 and 1836, 15 lakh Indians died of starvation. Starvation means hunger and suffering due to uh, hunger, right? Uh, what's a uh, strong hunger? Because of all this event here. Then, still, the British invented methods, other methods which gave them more profit. Invented and so on. Thandu yinay, British nsu khaji wore khesan raya shidu. Ani chuyu khaji maju tingur. The goods manufactured in England should not have any import duty when brought to India. So goods lana chala la gorda es toa. Chala manufacture lana suyo sa. Ingji nangbo lana chala suyo nsu. Chaka nanglo tsu ki le na import lana tsu nanglo ki le wa. Wherever you look in the uh, across all across the world, if you are exporting something, if you are taking a uh, particular goods from outside India, then there will be some text. If you take something inside, imports uh, items and goods. Then there will be some text. Text here that jala paachulo tonere nanglo le nere. In a didu gala, British made this rule that if England is uh, sending some items in India, they will not be 
they don't have to pay. Kuto bisa cakap macam mana? Karena they are English themselves. A good idea. Most of them agreed. The East India Company's loss began to cripple Indian industry. Now because East India Company came up with different laws and rules, it crippled Indian in- industry. Kaga nang lola ta? Koran zogi. Soda itu dah jero. Jadi sama hari kangjo sesi cripple nana jam ego jam ego. The British policies. Policies lana rule the law lagu dah ruin. Ruin means destroy the expert artisans and their businesses. So expert artisan lana lakse kebo wah the one who have uh, who are skillful in manual work and their businesses right their businesses were being destroyed by the British policy because they don't give any uh, worth and value to uh, the Indian artisans in India. Now we have some questions. I would like all of you to take a pause here, think of the answer, and once you are done, then you can move on, uh, continue the lesson. And okay, fourth part, Ram Mohan Roy. Now during such time, there were different, as we uh, read, uh, different martyrs, different uh, intellectual. Intellectual means a person who has high academic skills. Roy, lob join you in intellectual area. Roy, lo the rigba you in. That did you call Ram Mohan Roy la mishir? Uh, 1772 to 1833 he left so what has happened here so we'll see ram mohan roy a learned man from bengal understood what was wrong with the country so ram mohan roy understood that something is wrong let us not despise ourselves our ancient culture is great and we are capable of greater achievements we must first reform our society superstitions have been ruining us Now Ram Mohan Roy being an intellect or a learned man he knew that it was not just the british who are uh, destroying india right it was our we ourselves who are destroying and helping britishers ta khoranzo gi kyunji yores ngaranzo nanglo le kyunji yores kharre lana odi ngaranzo gi ani namdo thoba namdo mangbu shudu superstitions wa ani yo mangbu dus ani ngaranzo gi chiso de thangbo reform yergesh tangu dus wa ngaranzo gi ancient culture na ngaranzo gi rikshun di yakpu che peng yemba juris wa ta ngaranzo sosola ani despise chu ma despise na hate let us not hate ourselves wa ngaranzo sososol khari khalo nongjung tangu wa khari yores wa ngaranzo sososol digis so di ngaranzo chiso gi samno tangda na yerge tangu dus kana na samno tangda ni thoba namdo shiu dus sa jinge ni shiu ni shiu wa and uh, many men say that uh, due to women all the miseries are coming right so these all are like superstition and ram mohan roy were, uh, was inter- intelligent and he knew all these things right so what does he do so one day he said this to his wife he told his wife uma cows are of different colors but the color of their milk is the same different teachers have different opinions but the essence of every religion is the same Very simple word. Phaju mangbu yores wa cows are of different color, but the color of their milk is same, right? It is true. There are like different colors of cow. There are like white, uh, white, black, brown, and there are different color. But every cow gives a sim. Uh, what is a similar color of milk, which is white. Likewise, similarly, different teachers. There were like there will be different teachers, and their different teachers will have different opinions. Some will all all younger is, but the essence essence means the real. Uh, main point the main point of every religion is the same and that is to be kind to uh, help other and to live a happy life okay so these are some of it and this this is one of his great saying then he was attracted ram mohan roy was attracted by science and modern knowledge okay he was he started learning science and he uh, started learning modern language knowledge should be practical and scientific okay so ram mohan roy thinks that knowledge Whatever you get should be practical. You are some of the things that you are doing, you are doing. Some of the things that you are doing, you are doing. Some of the things that you are doing, you are doing. He crossed the sea and went to England to see what made the British powerful. So what did he? What did he do? He went abroad, right, to into England, and then he wishes to see what made British powerful. There he told them. The Palin color. We accept you as rulers. and you must accept us as subjects but you must remember the responsibility a ruler owes to his subject owes means your leisure or could the pillar and they could any chick wedge or can also on zoogie the gable and the 
ruling it is. We accept that, but you should also accept that as a ruler, right? As a ruler, as a ruler, any one during it, then you should be chanting as a ruler. Gain cash is your task. Did you manage to turn out your task? So you see that these. Words spoken by Ram Mohan Roy is very uh, crafty in its nature. It's very skillful and witty, right? Uh, he says it in such way that British cannot uh, be cruel and suppress India's idea and other stuff because as a ruler they also have their responsibility to his subjects. So subjects are na thada dilla phang la lagor, mimang la roa subjects le. Dilob sen lagor mada subject le na mimang la lagor. Konsa gebo ena gebo gwa mimang yor roa. Tang jidu gala British gebo jidu gala mimang sure kya roa. Oh yeah, the dictionary. Now there, we have some questions here. You can pause the video and try to answer the questions. Hinaya, but British did not stop. The East India Company, they didn't stop. So they started oppressing, oppression. You are suppressing other people's idea. You're not leaving them, uh, giving them any freedom to come up with their speech and write. But the British continued to oppress Indians. In 1818, they had passed Regulation 3rd. So, Regulation 3rd is a rule. Under it, an Indian could be jailed without trial in a court. So, this rule had made Indians' life very Uh, was much worse because now without any question or in a court roa timjo ga la ma ti wa che khap tu ga ra roa ya ga ina jo ga na ta chue gi ni top ta ste so this is very cruel and uh, evil uh, was a rule towards india all the time british officers in india drew big salaries and also made fortunes in private business ani Big salaries, drew big salaries, and made fortune. Fortune, and made and made fortune. Fortune, 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 and made fortune. By 1829, Britain was exporting British goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. So now, Indian in British are now taking their goods. So, the word is not the word. 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 The word is not British Khanan Zul Rai 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 British Yair Gai Tori Lai Rai The British prospered Indonesian prospered Lana grow and flourish Yair Gai Tori On the company's loot While Indian industries began to die Then Khanan Zul Gai Chalan Zul Tzu Goods The item Zul Tzu Yaga Na Khi Le Yaga Na Lola Pa Chong And Yaga Gai Chalan Zul Nyo Nye Ma Ra Rai And Yaga Gai Ni Chong Laka Lo Industry Chang Ma Kha Chere They started to fall down Governor General Bentik reported back home. Governor General and Didu Alata Yaga Nanglo La Rule Chingi Pura President the Prime Minister Ure. The bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India. Ra. Ta di khalar koi Yaga Nanglo La Didu Alo Cotton Na Na Nanglo Jota Cotton Ki Reha Gurwa. Di Re Chingi Dirwa Di Yaga Ki Ani Ta Thunge Sangma Koran Zore Sha Zor. The bone of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of plains of India. Okay, so I hope you get the point. So the uh, statement here, what does it mean? It means that the weavers means the one who wears something. So the one wearing cottons, right, in India are bleaching the plains of India. So this simply means that the British goods that came in India are now uh, killing the Indian people and their industry inside India because now India's industry are not getting any attention and all of the goods purchased in India are from uh, Britain and that's it, right? So if you have few questions here, pause the video and think of answers. Then comes dissatisfaction. Now, how did this dissatisfaction arrive? Dissatisfaction, no, 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 no,
so then what happened before uh, this period of time in india uh, india used to study in persian or sanskrit language roa sanskrit khonzu keikche persian khonzu keikta to chech dinde ne yi jangor but then englishman called macaulay he raised his opinion and he said that we should teach the indians native means people living in the, in uh, the country through english language we should make sure that sanskrit and persians are not used anymore we should teach education through english language and then they agreed and due to macaulay we are now studying uh, science social and mathematics all in english language okay so the father of uh, all these changes uh, macaulay on the right side english education produced clerks to whom the british gave petty jobs under them incidentally it produce it also produced a new generation of intellectuals now because indian people started learning education getting education in english language it produced many clerk clerk were no office workers simple office workers and they and them they were given simple petty means small very small jobs under british rule incidentally however it also produced the education also gave new generation of intellectuals ro mirab sa rigba yunge ya mi umuji inde tung ro ta khon zulub jo jang le ro then we must educate our brother so then these intellectuals are now saying that it is uh, a very good idea if we can teach our uh, what's it uh, brothers and sisters english and uh, help them grow their uh, would say uh, intelligent uh, intelligence and power and try to improve their material conditions for that we must convey our grievance to the british parliament so grievance lana kange the dunge the share so the share british parliament parliament lan chozo ro inji gi chozo nang lo nang zo convey chi bu dus convey means you are communicating your problem with british parliament and all this happen only because indian started learning education or getting education in english language right Now you you should see this uh, India map, and you will find that the pink, which were, at first was very small, has turned all across India, and the yellow is now very small, right? So this was the condition in eighteen fifty six. So by eighteen fifty six, the British had conquered the whole of India. So almost like. all across india was under the british rule there are like only some states right the last one is called my karnataka which was under tipu sultan of mysore they cared little about needs of indians so who cared little about needs of indians britisher our kings have become puppets and we have lost our old jobs puppets na ali pego chashas ruanga zo gebon zo khari lao de ngingudus and we have lost our jobs and lands they are converting our brothers you only talk do something to drive them away right kyunki she did us drive them away they are converting how are they converting they are converting the indians by uh, converting their religion into christianity they are uh, converting them by giving them english education and changing their mentality some no touch hoti jeu ke do wala they are converting that okay now we have some questions here post the video and think of the answer Now it was uh, in early 1855. Taxes continued to ruin the peasants. Peasants, peasants, lana farmer lagor da tax lana ta charge roanga zo ki ta tax sangma ha gurwa. Din zo mangbu gya yung du gala din zo ki kaje re ni shingba sangma thola ta ases. In Bengal, the Santals who had lost their lands under new land rule became desperate. Desperate lana hopeless ro rewa sangma lar. In 1855, they rose in rebellion. Rose lana rise langwagi chazi tu jawa. They rose in rebellion and massacred, massacred lana save like set up chir Europeans and their supporters alike. Chikpa chikyan roa chige me na re khonan zo jab jo chinga thang ma nyambo se kosur da kosur ki nyoda lana roa. Discontent was brewing in the East India Company's army too. So discontent means dissatisfaction. Was brewing means up, which was growing in East India Company's army too. Now in the East India Company, it was not only English people, right? Many Indians were also in the army. Now what are they saying? The white soldiers get huge pay mansions to live in, servants, while we get pittance and slow promotion. Now they are comparing themselves with white soldiers. So white soldiers have more privilege. they get huge 
payment they get huge salary and promotion was easier for them but for indian soldiers who work in east india company they don't get all these benefits the angres asks here the angres asks us to cross the sea which is against our religion who is the topi wala to abolish our age age old custom so now angres lana ng englishman white people they are telling them to move from india and cross the sea which were against their religion because in their religion they believe that if they cross seas they will lose their religion and then they are now uh, what's it criticizing right saying bad thing about the english people we must drive out the angres so then they decided that they should push drive means uh, kick out the english people from india sipoy mangal pande now you might have heard his name mangal pande attacked the adju adjutant of his regiment and was executed so khajil and regiment means his group so sipoy means the army of east india company so in his army uh, group there were there was an officer and he attacked the officer wah but he did not kill him however he was executed executed means he was killed due to uh, the uh, law by then okay kosher there thousands of other sepoys revolted the kosher do galat many others started revolting protesting they were stripped to their uniforms right humiliated and put in irons so many uh, what say uh, english people english soldiers were stripped to their uniform right to look piche humiliated nong chung ta ro ne put put in irons na ta ko zula shiu de chir ta tang ye nyang jur few englishmen had cared to understand indian custom or people's mind oh proud brahmin soldiers do you know that the grease on the bullet you have to bite is made from the fat of cows and pigs what the white man has deceived us to so grease lena num dilo roa didu wala menda to ko indu wala menda khuzuk so gen ra bullet di ta bullet lena diu di so gya se pure so gya se pidu wala Duty, you know, numzi jola, numzi di khari ki so jola na shak shakzi di phaju na phakbar wa cows and pigs la so. Ta di khala na they are against cows are against Hindu religion. Wa jagan zo ta in jagan zo phaju di la zi doa. Diga na shi khaje doa. Khaje zo ya phakbar di ya ta shi mursi ki doa la. They both started saying that they have deceived. They were deceived. Soon, chapatis were sent from village to village to tell the people that their emperor would want their service. The emperor, lana, ta gebo yo na mena dilagor da the great rulers, okay? So then they started uh, a particular activity where they have to uh, they use chapati or roti as a sign of uh, what say. Uh, uh, information as a sign of message that the emperor will need their service ro ta gebo gen nga zo gebo yona mena di chik che in service ro nga zo capture go dus yes all my village men will be ready ro and then they started accepting similarly lotus flower circulated among indian soldiers ro ani ta ga gi mang mi nang lo la khajil na inji mang mi nang lo la they started circulating means they started distributing uh, lotus flower as a sign of protest death to the foreigners now they are speaking the masses gave all help and shelter to patriots so patriots are la na rangzein thun da chik chinge jorwa okay a person who does something for his nation are known as patriot here the word now you can take pause here and think of answers Okay, now the eighth one, revolt. So now, as we see, I saw that uh, all of them started different activities to gather up their force. Now they revolted against uh, the British Raj in 1857, which is also known as the First War of Independence. Then there was a violent outbreak at Meerut. So Meerut, at that place, outbreak means people suddenly started uh, protesting in a violent way. right the sepoy sepoy men soldiers marched to delhi so delhi by then was the capital and long live our emperor bahadur shah so bahadur shah uh, was the last emperor of india who uh, who was considered the last and they started gathering their force uh, in the in delhi so that they would fight against british raj the rebellion spread wider now because 
they started from different areas like Meera, Delhi, and then it started started spreading all across India. Many landlords had lost their lands because of British policies, and they were sold. They were hurt. They were badly hurt. Many landlords were hurt. The reason is clearly there. The white man's rule must end. Yes, we will help you. So majority of Indian people started, uh, what say, uh, protesting and. Uh, and what's a revolting against the British Raj? So here you can pause the video again and think of answers. The fight for freedom, okay. And as you uh, have seen that all uh, all of it started spreading, then many former rulers, okay, former means previous rulers like Begum Hazrat Mahal of Lucknow were bitter. They were also angry. The white man has taken away my kingdom. They joined the upsurge against the foreigner. Upsurge means uh, rebellion, okay, revolt. They joined the revolt, you know, uh, which was against the foreigners. Popular leaders like Malvi Ahmedullah of Faziabad told the people, Rise, brothers, rise. The Angres is ruining our land. Ruining means destroying. We should rise against them. We should uh, fight against them. The people rose everywhere. Rose is the bastions of rice in Bareilly, Kanpur and Allahabad. So you can see that the fight for freedom was uh, has uh, what's it, gained its spark and now it turned into a wildfire. Azimullah Khan told Tatya Tok, we should have Peshwa Nana Sahib as our leader in this war of independence. So Peshwa Nana Sahib was uh, by then a very uh, popular Maharat, Marathi ruler and they wanted his support. The Petroids pounced upon the British and fought pitched battle all over North India. Now, Petroid, as I said, one who fights for their and one who loves their country and does action for their country. So, so, they pounced, they started fighting, attacking the British and they fought. Pitch battle means they fought man-to-man -man battle all over Northern India. Eighty years, eighty year old Kunwar Singh of Bihar received a bullet in his wrist. Uh, so even eighty year old uh, ruler like Kunwar Singh went into the battle to fight against uh, the foreigners. Mother Ganga, this is my last offering to you. So as we know that Indian uh, belief that Ganga is a holy river and he's offering his last sacrifice to Ganga itself. So what did he do? He cut off his wrist in order to uh, save himself from the, uh, what's it, uh, the, um, 